61A, lecture number seven, announcements. Midterm one is on Monday at 7 p.m. You can request alternate times. You can also request an exemption from the proctoring policy, but you need to do both of those by today. You will be recording your screen and your head using Zoom or Loom or your phone. It's up to you. We're trying to make this flexible so that it's not too onerous, but it's a good idea that you practice making a two-hour video. If you haven't done it already, do it today. Whenever you're going to spend two hours in front of your computer, just make a video of it. Make sure everything goes smoothly. That way you won't have to worry on the day of the exam. Or you could practice during the practice exam. Practice exam is shorter than the regular exam. We'll run it from 1 to 2 on Friday, and again from 7 to 8. And then we'll make it available for 48 hours, starting at 8 on Friday until 8 p.m. on Sunday. So if you can't make one of these two practice times, you could take it at your own time, which means you won't exactly get to see how all the announcements interleave with the exam itself and how the timer works, but you'll get most of the idea. So if you're available at one of these two times, I recommend taking the practice exam then. And if not, just take it later. Or it's up to you, you could not take it at all, but it's an awfully good idea to take the practice exam so that you know how the software works and you get a little practice. You can use one page of notes, two-sided, but you do need to create it yourself. You can bring your own scratch paper. If you want to store your notes electronically, you must use a Google Doc and grant us edit access to that doc so that we can see what's in it. There will be a review session run by a student group, Ada Kappa Nu, on Saturday. Here's a link to their Piazza post. There's also an exam prep section. These happen pretty much every Friday, and this Friday is no exception. There's a Piazza post about that. There will be no lab next week, or homework due next week. And there will be no lecture next Monday. We will have discussion and tutorials next Wednesday but nothing will happen on Monday except the midterm itself. The HOG project is due on Friday. You could get an early submission bonus point by finishing on Thursday, that's today. In addition to the hint videos that are linked from the project, there's some discussion of problem seven in the Q&A from last lecture. So if you click on this link, you'll go straight to the part where I talk about that. And finally, if you're looking for something to do next week besides take the midterm, you could participate in the completely optional HOG strategy contest, where you implement a final strategy and submit it, and then we play everybody's final strategy against everybody else's final strategy to see which final strategy is really the best. This is not required, it's just for fun. If you wanna participate, great. If you don't, that's great too. I hope you do, but if you have enough to do already, it's totally fine if you just ignore the hog strategy contest. And for the contest, we're adding one new rule. On all extra turns, you get to roll eight-sided dice instead of six-sided dice. That's good because you get more points and lower the chance that you'll roll a one. Here are the important links to the Zoom webinars. Well, actually there's just one Zoom webinar link. There's also the lecture Q&A and a Google Drive directory full of recordings of orientations and exam prep. You do need a berkeley.edu account to log in and view those. A few more words about the rules of the HOG contest. You can submit in pairs, but one person can only be part of one pair. Your score for the contest is the number of entries against which you win more than 50.00001% of the time. The way that we compute who wins is not by actually simulating the rolls of dice, but instead carrying out an elaborate probability calculation that computes the exact percent of the time that one strategy would win against the other if they played forever. So even though Hog is a game of chance, there's really no chance in the way that we score the contest. Strategies are time limited. We don't announce a particular time limit, but if your strategy runs really slowly, you might think of a way to make it run faster. For example, by just keeping track of how many dice you want to roll for every pair of scores and looking it up instead of computing it fresh every time. All strategies must be deterministic pure functions of the player's scores. You get the two scores in, you decide how many dice you're going to roll. 
you don't get to know whether you're taking an extra turn or not. And that's part of what makes this new extra rule fun. You have to decide how many dice to roll just by guessing about whether you're rolling 8-sided dice or 6-sided dice. But there is information in the scores that tells you whether maybe you are taking an extra turn or maybe you're not. Winning entries will receive a paltry amount of extra credit, 3 points for the winner, 2 points for second place, 1 point for third place. This is easily the worst way to earn points in this course, in terms of the amount of effort that you have to put in in order to get such a small number of points. There's such a small number of points that it's very unlikely to affect your final letter grade in the course. So why would you participate in this contest? Well, for the real prize, honor and glory. We'll have an assignment called the Hog Contest that contains the rest of the rules and directions for how to submit. And I want to emphasize that the honor, the glory that you receive for winning, will not just last this semester, but for all time. Because I keep track of every winner of the Hog Strategy Contest from every semester that I've taught this course through 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, spring 2020. The fall 2020 winners have yet to be determined, but your name could be on this version of this slide that I use every semester that I teach 61A until the day comes when we retire the hog strategy contest, which who knows, maybe that will never happen at all. So I hope that inspires you to come up with a final strategy. It can be simple, it can be elaborate. Submit it, and we'll see what happens. The rest of today's lecture is mostly about review, although there is one new topic at the very end, but the new topic at the very end will not be on the midterm. It just finishes the one little thing that was in chapter 1.6 of the book called Decorators. I'll tell you about it, but you don't need to know it. It's kind of an interesting fact about Python, so I'll put it at the end of this lecture. But everything else in this lecture is a bunch of review problems. And what I would suggest, if you want, is that instead of just watching this all the way through, you pause when you see the problem and think about it yourself. And then you could listen to me describe how you would approach it and how you would solve it. And then once you're finished watching this lecture, going to whatever exam prep and review sessions you're going to attend, I think it's not a bad idea to go over one or two past exams I think it's really unnecessary to go over a bunch of them, and the most recent ones are the most relevant. And then, get a good night's sleep, stay relaxed, and don't forget that the way grading in this course works, if you skip the hardest question on every exam and get the rest of it right, you can still get an A in the course. So you really don't have to be focused on getting every single thing right. If you solve the whole thing, fantastic. If you don't, you'll be fine. If you don't get some rest, or you get too nervous when you see a problem that you can't solve, you might end up with a score that doesn't reflect your true knowledge and abilities. So do get some rest, do try to stay calm, and just focus on doing your best, and I think you'll do just great. I know exams are stressful, but this one will be over soon, and we'll be back to learning new material.